For today's project, you're going to need uh, one of these picture frames. Now, it is made to hold two four by six photo frames. I did find it in white. I don't know if they have any other color choices. And you're also going to need a sheet of the wallpaper that you can get from Dollar Tree. And this one is a wood plank. Let me give you a full measurement. So the frame is about 10 and a half inches by about eight and a half inches. We are not going to be using the glass, so go ahead and set that aside. Now I always use the insert as my guide. Just place that on the back and trace it and then cut it out. Once you have your piece cut out, go ahead and place it in the frame. That looks absolutely adorable. Perfect for my background. Now Dollar Tree also carries this year in their um, short living line, these really adorable fish. Now, if you want to use this one, you could probably fit two of these on here, one going this way and then flipping it around and one going that way. But I decided I wanted to go with this fish, one in the middle. So you want to remove the uh, jute cord back here and the staples if you can. So we are going to be placing our fish here in the center. But before I do that, I want to trim this out with some of the nautical rope. And I'm just going to go all the way around the edge here and glue it down. up my end here just a little bit. This rope likes to come apart as soon as you cut it. So I just put a little bit of glue right in the end and then pull it all back together. I have my rope trim glued in. I'm really happy with that. Now I'm going to add my fish and I'm going to place them right in the center here. And I'm just going to attach him with some hot glue. I think that looks absolutely adorable. Now I'm also going to add one of these starfish that you can also pick up at Dollar Tree. And I want to glue that kind of right down here in the corner. I think that'll be really cute. I did get my starfish glued on. 
Now I had to kind of lift it up and go in and add a lot more hot glue down there because the starfish isn't really flat, but I'm really happy with that. Now I feel like it needs just a little something, something else. So I have pulled out a little bit of my Waverly Antique Wax. Just a little teeny bit. Get that on kind of a stiff brush. And then I want to add just a little bit to the starfish here. So I'm just going to lightly brush over it. It has a nice texture on it, which this will help that show up a little bit better. But a little goes a long way. You can always go back and add more, so do less than more. I think that looks so much better. Makes it stand out more and makes it look a little bit more realistic. Now I want my fish to stand out just a little bit more than it does on the background. So I'm gonna go right around the edge here with a little bit of the antique wax. Not a whole lot, just a little, just so that that shape kind of pops up off that background. If you enjoy hauls, crafts, and learning new craft techniques, please consider subscribing to my channel. With the holiday season vastly approaching, make sure you hit that subscribe bell. You also want to hit the notification bell so YouTube will let you know when I upload new content. And there you go, we are all done. I got my antique wax all the way around my fish. I think that really makes him pop off the background so much better. I'm really happy with this. I'm gonna be hanging this in my bathroom. And to hang it, I went ahead and ran a piece of jute cord across the back here. Because I have the starfish here on the corner, it won't hang straight from the center. So this way I can slide it side to side to wherever I need to to get it to hang straight with that extra weight there. But I'm very pleased with how this turned out. Simple, quick, easy, and absolutely gorgeous. For our next project, you're going to need one of these little house home decor pieces that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. These are in their short living line. You can choose whichever one you can find. They have a, a several different ones. Remove whatever 3D element might be on it. The paint scraper works really well and gets that right up. Now I have a piece of the wallpaper left over from the previous project. And all I did was lay it down, put my house over it, trace it out, and cut it out. Now it does need some adjusting because, of course, I want to show this trim. So I'm going to lay it right down on my piece before I glue it down or tack it down. Then rub your fingers right along those creases there so you can see where you need to trim. It may take a couple times, but just keep trimming until you can get that to fill in your space. So I cut my piece here and I have it fitted and I can still see just a little bit of blue in a few places, which I don't want to see. So 
I've gone ahead and taken my sandpaper block and I've roughed everything up. Sanded out the sides and the bottom. And now I'm just going to take some white paint. I want to paint this here on the sides white. And then I'm going to paint right around the edge all the way around with white so none of the blue will show. And then here on the top, I like this color trim here, but it's just this plain on the top. So I'm going to go over that with the antique wax. And if it doesn't match, then I'll go over this also with the antique wax. And I'm just using regular Apple Barrel white paint. You just really don't want to see any of that blue peeking out around the edges. I have my little house painted. I just went white all the way around so none of the blue would show. And then I did do the little top ridge there with the antique white. Go ahead and set that aside and let that dry. Now while that's drying, you're gonna to wanna to paint one of these cute little anchors. These uh, come like five in a pack. You can also find these at Dollar Tree. Now I used Admiral Blue from Apple Barrel, but you can use any dark blue that you have. Now, once this is dry, you want to take one of the uh, Crafter Square white metallic markers. I really do like these. Out of all the ones that they sell, this is the only one that has a fine tip. Now, this looks a little too plain to me, just being one solid color. So I'm going to slowly work my way around the edge and just add what looks like little white stitching. And I think that looks so much better. It makes it really stand out. Okay, so my paint is dry. I'm gonna go ahead and add on my wallpaper. And this is peel and stick, which makes it so easy to work with. Start on the bottom here and get this lined up. have my wallpaper on I think it looks absolutely adorable and by just touching up the top there and the sides really makes it look like a finished piece now you're also going to need some jute cord and we're going to be wrapping that around the top of the house here I'm just going to start it here in the back with some hot glue So just wrap around however many times you want. That looks good. That was about six times. And once you get it placed where you want it, go ahead and run some hot glue across all of the strands in the back. You don't want this to be sliding around. Like that. Okay, now while that's drying, we're going to add some jute cord to our little anchor here. Push it in from the front. And I'm going to add just a dab of hot glue to hold that end. Okay, 
And then I'm just going to take that down and wrap it around my anchor. And you can do however many times you think it needs or until it looks right to you. I went three times there and then I'm going to go a couple times around here. I like that so now I'm going to tack the other end down on the back I think my anchor looks absolutely adorable and now we are going to attach him onto the front of our house here just like that and I'm just going to hot glue it right onto the jute cord there and there you go we're all done with this little craft I absolutely love it. It looks really pretty on my rope tray that I made. I will link that tutorial at the end. But I think it is absolutely adorable and looks great on a counter, side table, or on the rope tray. For our next project, you're going to need a package of the nautical icons, the little seahorse. Now you get six pieces. You will only need three. You're also going to need three wood skewers, a base. You can use uh, any of the larger. This is the larger size. They have several different shapes, so whatever you're attracted to, you can use that. And then you're also going to need a little bit of spackling. This is the lightweight spackling that I get at Dollar Tree. You just want to fill the holes. Once you get the hole filled, just remove any excess. Make sure both sides are smooth. Set that aside and let it dry. Now while these are drying, you just want to decide how you want to lay them out. And I think I kind of want to do a stair step. So you have one that's the highest and then a little higher and then a little higher, something along those lines. Once you decide how you want to place them, you need to cut your skewers to the length that you want. And we will be attaching these guys right here on the tail. So you'll need about a half an inch there to attach to the back of the tail. So keep that in mind when you're cutting your length. And then also you're working on a three dimensional. So as I place these, I'm going to place the tallest one in the back. The next one I'll place off to one side a little bit more forward. And then the third one will be on the opposite side and a little bit more forward. So that way I can not only play with the height of them, but also a three dimensional. So if I want them to overlap a little bit, I can. So just think about those when you're deciding on your length and then get your skewers cut. So now I'm going to paint my base and my wood skewers and I don't want a solid color. This is going to be a very beachy feel, very weathered. I'm going to be using just some plain apple barrel white. You can use whatever white paint you have. And I have a nice rough chip brush. So I just dab a little bit into the paint, dab it off so I don't have a lot. Like I said, I don't want full coverage. I want this to look very weathered. 
So I'm just going to go over it back and forth with a little bit of paint to get that to look very weathered. Make sure I go around those edges. Now you can do as much or as little of this as you like. I just didn't want it to stay that plain, flat, natural wood. It needed a little something to bring it over to that coastal nautical feel. Just work with that until you are happy. You'll want to do the same thing to your wood spears. Once you get that done, set it aside and let them dry. Now I have my white on and I'm really happy with that, but I want to add just a little bit more dimension to the base. So I pulled out a folk art mat. This is Country Twill, Country Twill Beige Horse. But anything that's in that beige or khaki color will work. So I put a little bit here out on my palette and I just want a very small amount. And again, I'm just going to quickly go through and add some to give a little bit more dimension here to my base. It's just a little too white for me. <laughs> And when I'm dry brushing, I find the best way is just go quickly. That way you don't end up getting too much on there and you can go over more than once if you need to. Really like that color. It's beautiful. Absolutely love that. Okay, my little guys are dry. Now, if you didn't get it really smooth and it's a little rough, just take a little sandpaper and go over it until it's smooth. You can check both sides. Now, I've laid out some more paint. I have the uh, some more of the Country Twill Beige Force, which is this one. And then this one is really pretty. It is called French Blue. They are all folk art. That's this one. And then the last one is just an ivory white. That is this one. So I'm going to paint each of my little seahorses here a solid color, and each one will be a different color. Once it's dry, then I'm going to go over them and brush them with some of the other colors so that they all go together. Now you just need to decide which sides you're going to paint. I want two to face one way and one to face the opposite, so that's how I have them laid out. And just to make it easy on myself, I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is this ivory. And just get one good coat on each of your seahorses. My seahorse are drying, so while they dry, I'm going to add a little trim here of some nautical rope. Now I already went in and glued the end. This rope really will unravel quite quickly if you don't put just a little dab of hot glue and pull it together. That'll keep the end close. And right around the base here, I'm going to uh, glue the nautical rope. And I'm going to start right in the center here in the back. So just lay down a bead of hot glue and just do a small amount at a time. This has lots of curves in it, so I want to make sure that it's nice and nestled. 
And then just clean up any hot glue that may squeeze out. You don't really want to see that, especially from the top. My rope is now attached all the way around the base. I absolutely love it. I think it really sets off that multi-toned color. Perfect. My seahorse are dry, so I'm going to go in and add some texture. Just a small amount of paint and brush through. I think these look absolutely adorable and don't be afraid to layer the colors if you want to do all three on all three of them go right ahead but I really like this I think this looks absolutely gorgeous I think I am going to add just a little bit of blue to the white one it makes them look very cohesive that they all carry the same color tones and they're all rustic Get your seahorse painted and then set them aside to dry. All my items are dry, so we're going to start to put these together. Add a small amount of hot glue there to the tail and then glue on your wooden skewers. Just think about how you want to display them and then put them on the correct length stick. Now the glue has set up on those. Next I'm going to start gluing them here onto my piece. You want to make sure that the area where the two pieces of rope met is in the back. Now get a good dollop of hot glue down there and place your wood skewer right in the center. Now you don't need to worry, we're going to be covering uh, the bottom here with some decorative stuff. You just need to make sure that that little guy is facing the right way. So I've had a little trouble getting these to stay standing straight, so I've decided to give them a little bit more support here on the bottom, especially since I'm going to cover it with some decorative moss. So once I decide where I want to place my little seahorse here, I glue down one of the blocks on one side and add a little bit of hot glue here on the bottom, get my seahorse down, and then right in front add another little blob of hot glue and place my second block. Just make sure they're all facing the way you want them and let that hot glue set up. And I go back and add some more on either side. You're gonna wanna let your glue fully set up before you move on to the next step. The little blocks that I use to help secure my seahorses come in a package like this. You can pick them up at Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. You're also going to need some Spanish moss. I did pick this up at Dollar Tree. Now the reason why I chose this was because of the color. I didn't want anything green. I wanted it to look more washed out, kind of dried out, like it would be at the beach. So I thought this would be the perfect color. 
And I'm just going to glue this down around uh, the bottom here, one to cover up my blocks now, but also to give me a base to add some other decor pieces. I usually like to break up my moss a little bit first before I start to glue it down. You also need something that's going to help you not to burn yourself. And then just go in and start to lay down some hot glue in the areas that you want to cover with the moss. I'm going to start here with the wood blocks. So just add a little bit of glue and wrap it around so that you don't see those blocks. Okay, once you get your base of moss down, then we're going to clean this up a little bit. And I just take a pair of scissors and give it a little haircut. You also want to trim anything that's really wild and sticking out too crazy. So just keep working on it until you like the way that it is and then clean up any of that excess moss and remove that. Okay. All right. I have everything trimmed. Now a good way to get off all that excess stuff is just use a large clean paintbrush and just go through it'll brush right off and make it easy for you to get it nice and clean plus that way you can also see where else you need to trim if anything sticks out I pulled out uh, one of my jars with a bunch of mixed shells in it. I'm going to be adding some shells to this project. I also pulled out a bag of driftwood. Now I picked this up last year at Dollar General and the shells I mainly picked up from Dollar Tree. And then I'm also going to add a few of these really pretty accent decorative stones. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree. I like them because they're nice and pretty and shiny and you have a wide variety of colors. I pulled out a selection of small stones and some of my shells and a couple small pieces of the driftwood. And now I'm just going to work on gluing them into the base here wherever I like. I'm going to add the rest of my embellishments and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And here you go. We are all done. I think the base came out absolutely adorable. I really do like the mix of all the different shells and the stones and even the little piece of driftwood. I think it really sets the stage for that coastal feel. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's three craft tutorials. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and let me know which one was your favorite. You know, it's always a pleasure to see you. I hope everyone is staying happy, healthy, and strong. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.